Astros. Okay. I want to go really quickly to Luke chapter 21, verse 19. Uh, Luke 21, 19. And it's quick, quick uh, scripture. It just says, in your patience, possess ye your souls. In, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Um, I believe when the scripture is talking about possessing your soul, it's regarding uh, possessing your soul as in being kept until we receive our eternal reward, uh, each one of us. And so this, Jesus, is, these are the words of Jesus. He's letting them know. He was actually right here talking about how they'll be persecuted and go through these things. But I believe this is a universal truth that, uh, that our patience, uh, if we could be patient, if we could trust him, if we could wait on him, uh, he is going to bring us through. Uh, to receive this salvation that he's prepared for us. And so it's imperative that we gain patience. Um, patience is not a natural thing for us. I want to quickly look at this definition of patience. Uh, it's not going to be on your screen, but it just says here, uh, cheerful or hopeful endurance. There's a difference to, to wait in misery and waiting in uh, with, with joy and and with gladness, with an expectation that there is something that's going to be worth it all. We often look through the Old Testament and we see the children of Israel, they had to wait on at various times and there was grumbling and complaining. The Bible says a whole lot about grumbling and complaining, but we know way too well how to grumble and complain. We can grumble and complain with the best of them. And the fact of the matter is that when we're grumbling and complaining while we're waiting on God, it just it shows that we still have some work. There's still some stuff that he needs to work through us and out of us. But when we can find patience and we can find joy in enduring, there's a reward for us. Now, if you have your blue letter Bible, uh, you don't necessarily need to turn to it. If you just uh, the blue letter Bible or some various apps allow you to search for a word. The word patience actually only shows up in the New Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, there is the idea of long suffering and patience and long suffering are synonymous. But long suffering shows up in the Old Testament just a couple of times. And when it does, it shows up as being an attribute of God. It was never a man that long suffered. It was God that long suffered. Patience and long suffering are godly things. If we go to uh, Galatians chapter 5, uh, Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 22 and 23, the Bible would say something like this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, the long-suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. What that means to say is that patience is not a, is not a function or a characteristic of a natural man. Now, some people have a degree of patience, but it's more that the ability to be able to wait or either suffer through something. But as described by the, the concordance and what patience means, it has this element of hope and joy about it. Amen. It's not that I'm just waiting and I'm holding my horses, as they would say in, in, in worldly terms, but it's that I'm waiting with, with joy and cheer and in good faith, knowing that God has my back. And there's two truths that about about when we when we're waiting on God, there's two things that's going to happen that could potentially happen. Well, maybe more, but let me just add this: when God has revealed to us that He's going to do something for us, two opportunities: either He's going to do it for you in earth, or He's going to do it for you in heaven. And I don't care when I get it; I'll take either one of those scenarios. Matter of fact, a lot of the things that when we're waiting on them in earth, we don't get, if we get to eternity, we don't even need that thing. Many people are waiting to be healed. Amen. I, if I, if the Lord decides to just take me to uh, my eternal resting place, I didn't need that thing. If I'm waiting for understanding, if the Lord takes me, I don't need it. So either I'm going to get the thing that the God promised that he's going to do for me, or I'm going to see him in a state that I don't need that thing anymore. But God will not fail me. If I'm able to endure with good hope and with cheer and in trust and all faith, knowing my God cannot fail and he cannot lie. And so patience is something that God gives to us 
to perfect us as the body of Christ with his spirit because he understood that he needs, for some of us, he, some of us, many of us are going to live our salvation out in this earth. What do I mean by that? The Bible talks about the graces, the manifold graces of God, and that uh, the various things that, that God has given us, these fruits of the, not the, the gifts of the Spirit, are for the edification of the saints, and that there's a particular ends that he wants to bring us to, but the way that we get there is through a difficult trail, a difficult road, trials and tribulations, a demonstration of supernatural uh, grace and mercy in ways that when we would, when when the when it would be my, it would make sense in the world to react one way, we react like Christ. But we know that doesn't happen for us instantly. The Bible says like this in Second Peter, Titus, chapter one, verses five through eight. He says this, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we see right here there's a progression that first we got to have faith. Will be will be diligent, number one. And we learned a few weeks ago that diligence means speed, that we know that there's a need and we move through it as quickly as we can. But 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 uh, Peter begins to describe it seems as this this is the order in which things mature and are worked out through us. If you look at the first part, Titus, put it up. He says uh, faith, the uh, virtue, virtue to knowledge. Knowledge to temperance, and temperance to patience. These things are all functions of the of those self. These are things that God needs to work through us initially for us. And then what patience brings forth, keep it up, T. What patience brings forth then is godliness. Now, when you get to godliness, you get these other concepts of Christ that says brotherly kindness and charity. Right? So at first, God needs to work on our temperance and then our work on our virtue and knowledge and, 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 and these things until we get patience. But patience becomes this pivot for us. And when we get close to godliness, there's a, in, in, in Revelation, good, good tea, in Revelations in chapter 13, 12, and I think 14, 10, only reason why I can quote these is because I was just reading them. And the Bible has this idea about the 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 patience of the saints. Herein is the patience of the of the saints. And there's these particular promises or these truths or these guarantees for the saints who have patience. Uh, and it and it alludes to the idea of these things that that the saints in the tribulation are going to escape. And we know that God ultimately is working to form Christ in us. Thank you. When I think about brotherly kindness, I think about in the Old Testament, um, the, uh, the, what the, the, they, they often say this word about God himself. It's a Hebrew word, hesed, which means the loving kindness. The fact of the matter is that God has this quality about him called loving kindness. He wrapped that in the flesh called Jesus Christ. That thing became a spirit and was able to get inside of us. And that love of God is shed abroad in our hearts that the ultimate expression of holiness and faithful obedience is brotherly love, brotherly uh, kindness and charity. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, T, uh, Paul says this, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest things of these is charity. Why? Because you know what? The, 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 all the gifts of the Spirit that, that God names are to help us on this earth. Love is the only one that transcends this, this continuum. And the love that God has what came down to earth, God inside of me, 
And if I allow that love that he put inside of me to abound in me, it will it will first fix me. I'll first save myself. But when I'm saved myself, I become godly to the point that I'm now a, uh, exhibiting, amen, just naturally the love of God towards other people. I've been sharing with as many people as I can just the most simple way that we could look at the culmination of everything is that we begin to love like Christ loved. The Bible says this, what matter of love is this, that a man would lay down his life for a friend? This begins the ultimate expression of faith and holiness. The ultimate expression of sin is selfishness. Come on. And once God is able to work that stuff out of us, he can then begin to do the greater work that he wants to do. And that's be able to put a love inside of us because what we do through that love is the same thing that the Bible begins to describe these things that earn us these crowns and these rewards. Love covers a multitude of transgressions. When we begin to have the love of Christ that exudes out of us, amen, we begin to, 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 to fulfill some of these that, that, uh, that, that, the, uh, that the Bible talks about those are the wise that, that win souls. The, uh, uh, the, the, James says something about the, the wise saint will, will reach out, amen, to, the, to the, the man that's backslidden and bring them back and there'll be a reward for these things. But in order for us to first have that, we have to save ourselves and we have to first be fixed. And we have to have patience because the only way that we get to be able to operate in the power of Jesus Christ is if we first, the Bible would say, suffer with him. Paul said, in my body, I bear the marks of Christ. I've suffered as Christ has. I've come through so much that it's allowed me to, to trust God that I don't get antsy no more. And, 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 and I know that he has an intended end for me. So when there's a need that I might have in my life, that I've learned to trust him. There's something like, there's something about and I can't say that I've had this. I remember one of our brothers who's gone home to be with the Lord, uh, Brother Dominique Hudson. I remember he had a very, uh, uh, and uh, he, he, he exclaimed to me an out-of-body experience. Uh, he had died, he had coded, and he had came back. And I remember him, and I think I shared it on a message in the first year of promise. He described to me his relationship with God after that moment. It's just as the body would naturally create a keloid after it's been cut, that that piece of flesh won't be cut like that again. Not that it's hardened to resist God, but it, 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 it's now strengthened that it, that it can't be swayed like that. When we come through these things that God brings us through, we come through with the type of spiritual keloid, not a hardness, but a keloid. Because when we come through there, amen, when the, the darts of the enemy, if he aims at us again in that place, we're not afraid and we're not worried. Oh, devil, you tried to do that before, but God brought me through. And I know that if he did it before, when my faith was this big, what shall he do now my faith is this big? Will it not, not have that much more strength? And will I not be that much more able to endure with, with, with love and with compassion and with great joy? There's only one way that we are perfected. It's through the fire. And I know we've been talking about this so many times since the face said, just continue to drill it. Our patience, when things ain't making sense, our patience, when it looks like God has left us, our patience, when it looks like God won't speak, our patience, when it looks like everybody's turned their back, our patience, if we could just hold on and come through these things, 
we get closer to God. We become united with his purpose. We become in sync with his will and how and his desire and how he moves and operates. I want to, I'm going to close here pretty, I'm going to close. I want to read one more scripture. Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. This is something that I know on the pop line gets quoted all the time and it encourages me every single time I hear it. Jeremiah says this, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. This is God saying this, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You know, I remember Monique was, she had reiterated this something I said once that the Lord gave me. If, if God would give you the gift to repent, he intends to bring you all the way through. God doesn't draw you to leave you short. The Bible will say that he ain't brought me this far to leave me now. You good, T. But he intends to do the exact same thing. And not only does he have an expected end to glorify you on that day, but he also has an intention to prosper you until then. And God has great plans for your life and specifically you, because he knows that when he does this thing for you, you're going to be careful to give him glory that somebody else might be encouraged and that a sinner might be saved. And so God has already orchestrated these moments in your life. I almost think that God wants to sometimes add a little drama to it. I'll never forget, we all lived through this moment with the Staples family when they were going to the Bay Area, to the Sacramento area, and they was looking for houses and it, everybody was on edge. Monique was on edge. Chris was on edge. The babies came to live with us during that time. And we were praying and praying and praying because they needed a house. And then at the, and not at the 11th hour, at 11.59, God did it. And it seems to be that God likes to be able to do this. Yeah. Not only does he, through that, be able to stretch out our faith, but it just gives him an opportunity to boast more in his goodness and his perfect timing. Right on time, God opens the door. I know somebody has that testimony. It looked like it was over. It, it looked like it was just going to be too late. I knew that tomorrow, I think about the Wright family, they shared an amazing testimony recently. It looks like tomorrow is the day. The, the repo man is coming or, or the bill is due. Uh, uh, there's going to be a knock at the door tomorrow. And late in the midnight hour, God turns it around. God turns it around. But the, here goes the thing, y'all. If we begin to complain, if we begin to bicker, if we begin to go on social media about how woe is me and I've been deserted and left, then it won't be a demonstration of faith. And what God wants to do through our patience is make a demonstration of faith. Because he needs somebody to trust him. Because there's a, a specific timing and a particular timing in which God wants to do something. You know, we have to understand that God is building a character in us. And sometimes our character is not where it needs to be for us to receive this next season or this next thing that God wants to do. I, you know, I was looking at the prodigal son and he obviously was not prepared to go off on his own when he left his dad's house with his inheritance. And he found himself that after he had squandered all his money, a famine hit. He wasn't mature enough to be able to steward over what God, over the inheritance that he had received according to his own time. And when the moment of his testing came, he didn't have the character to endure. And I know so many of us are waiting on things, but I think God is waiting too. He's waiting to make sure that you can handle it. 
He, he, he's waiting to make sure that once he does this thing for you, uh, you won't leave him. He's waiting to make sure that once he does this, it gives you this testimony, you don't sit on it. But you have the character to be able to boast in him, amen, and not in a way that becomes prideful about you, but a way that is humble and points people back to the cross. So I want to encourage everybody who's where I am. I'm waiting on something. I'm, I've been struggling as well. And, and I'm doing my very best to not get ahead of God. Amen. I have a, I have a track record of doing that, but I'm waiting. And I have to continue to remind myself, and this is, if this is you replace, replace Isaac with yourself. I have to continue to remind myself that yes, he's going to do this work. But whether he does it in my time or his time, it's going to be perfect. And if he decides to do it in my time, I may mess it up. But if he does it in his time, it's going to be in a way that not only is a blessing for me, but it becomes a blessing for everybody around me. You know, there's something about a mature fruit tree. When you have an immature fruit tree, it, it might, it might, if it's an apple tree, it might yield one apple. But when that, when that tree has been tested, mm -hmm. Sister Faith was, uh, was explaining to me that these, there's this particular uh, farmer that was talking about, he had a, uh, he has a crop, an orchard, and it went through these tough times and tough, tough seasons and tough cycles of natural disasters and all these things. Those natural disasters and things strengthen the roots of that tree. And those roots become so deep that that tree yields fruit that could not happen had it been in, per in a perfect environment. Come on. An immature tree is going to yield immature fruit. But if we allow, if we're patient to allow God to try us and to test us, and if we would wait and allow these storms to pass by, when the sun shines, we'll yield forth a fruit, amen, that we cannot handle. And not only will it bless us and bless our houses and bless our communities and bless our church and bless the greater church and even bless the sinner that they might have some of it. But we have to be patient and we should expect the greater things. We should expect fruit. We, ex we should know that the longer we wait and the more anxious I am, it must be God letting me know it's going to be an amazing thing. Amen. Lord, if you don't come back today, I know the blessing is going to be greater. Lord God, if you decide to wait one more month, I just know that it's going to be more fruitful. Lord God, if you want to hold off for a year, hold off for a year because I know next year. Amen. When you do this, the Bible says he'll pour out a blessing that we cannot contain. Come. He'll pour out a blessing that we cannot contain. Yeah. I just want to encourage somebody that's waiting. 